Hi, I'm Marge Charmley and I'm from St. Paul. My co-host Dr. Anita Kozan isn't with us today but will be with us in future sessions. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. And I will have you know if you've never seen us before that we are in just finished our 20th year of recording. So we've had impact and longevity in regard to being visible in the bi community. So we are thrilled to be here today filming on location at the Because Conference. For those of you who uh, have not heard of Because, Because is a regional bisexual conference that is uh, started in the Twin Cities, or as we like to call them, the bi cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota and they have just completed 30 years. So we are partners with them and we are glad to be filming here on location in the Wellstone Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. So we always have a number of wonderful guests with us and one of the things that has happened since we last were filming, which was pre-COVID, this is our first series of shows since COVID. We were off the air for about two and a half years but in that interim, we now have every one of our 300, over 300 episodes online available to you in the Jean Treader collection, LGBTQ collection, in the University of Minnesota archives. So they now have the largest collection of bi video material in the world. So if you go to the Jean Treader collection, and we will have a banner that lets you know how to get there. Uh, you can see any one of our shows that have been on the air for the last 20 years. So having said all the introductory stuff, I'm very thrilled to have met a man today who is very important in regard to fundraising for the bi community. Uh, historically, there haven't been philanthropic funds who have helped, or that are designated to the bi community. We now have one, thanks to Neil Osvey and his colleagues. Neil Osby from the, tell me where you're from, <laughs> Visibility Impact Fund. Visibility Impact Fund. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I got derailed just for a moment, but that <laughs> happens. All right. All right. So Neil, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us about the, um, your organization. Yeah, so um, the Visibility Impact Fund, uh, we launched this fund in September of 2020, so we're pretty pretty new, uh, just uh, at our second anniversary this last month. Congratulations, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we launched uh, as a giving circle. Uh, it's uh, a way for people in the bike community that want to uh, help support and fund projects that bi orgs are doing and uh, any organization that's focused on uh, improving the well-being and visibility and health of the bisexual community uh, that uh, we can we can raise some money and uh, be a grant maker we're the first grant making organization to provide money that's exclusively for the bi community that is fabulous mm -hmm. it's been a long time coming it's been a very yeah long yeah time yeah coming. Yes. but you're doing it doing it yes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I uh, I uh, was able to pull this off with a great team. We have a wonderful leadership team that we came together in the summer of 2020 to, to do this. And uh, we didn't know what to expect uh, since it's never been done before. Yeah. Um, but it's been just overwhelmingly positive. Uh, by people, by people in the bi community have really stepped up, recognized this need. And um, we have now, in just two years, uh, through small donations and one-time donations and monthly recurring donations, we've raised over $40,000 just wow. in two years. Yeah. And we were talking a little bit before the show. You have now given funds to, what, 10 organizations already? Yes. Yeah, and tell me a little bit about those organizations. Yes, so um, we six months after we launched, we piloted our first grant uh, cycle, and we've had four grant cycles and in total we've granted to board of grants to 10 organizations wow and um some of the highlights in our last round we uh the bisexual resource center in boston mm -hmm. was a recent grantee and we funded a project uh that they're launching to provide uh by pride inf information packets 
to LGBTQ organizations. So and these could be nationwide. 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 This is a nationwide program. Okay. So they they did a, they did a pilot on this. Uh, I think more locally, and now they they want to expand this. And we provided them resources and funds to um, get these packets together so they okay. can be ready and free for organizations that want to have these uh, buy pride packets. So this would be like pride organizations in these different venues that would have a buy packet. Correct. Buy yep. information. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I believe if you want to know more about what they're doing, I think they have it up on their website now too. So okay. you can check them out and see what they're doing. We've also funded um, some of the other organizations. We There's a new buy organization in Georgia called Buy Plus Georgia. And they, um, we helped them launch the organization. We gave wow. them some money. And they were able to pay a fundraiser to go out and get more funds. So it's it's really showing how you need money. To yeah, yeah, money yeah, to yeah, yeah, exactly. Scenario. Seed money, as they yeah, call it, yeah. So um, they're, they're doing amazing work down there. So we're really proud to have given them some money to help get started. Um, and we have <laughs> we had an organization in Colorado. Uh, there was a uh, youth uh, center. Uh, it's the Four Corners Youth, uh, Rainbow Youth Center. And they used, uh, we granted them some money and they're now able to create an online forum for by youth, and also they used money to um, uh, have buy resources in their center. So books and uh, information guides and things that are specifically about how uh, to the by youth in their center. So um, <coughs> that was um, so that's what they're doing with their funds. We also have uh, organizations. Um, uh, in Florida, we have, uh, I'm just trying to remember all yeah, the yeah, different yeah. organizations <laughs> yeah. right now. And, and uh, it's called PRISM, it's another LGBTQ organization. They created a video to um, address uh, bi erasure in their, uh, in their community for their uh, bi youth, or their LGBTQ center down there. Wow, so, okay. Yeah, we're doing a lot of, there's a lot of different um, work that's being done, still by sexual in California, they're a grantee as well. They've they've actually been funded. Uh, we've actually given three grants to them. Whoa! Uh, they've, they've they've been doing some great work over there. So, um, yeah, we're and yeah, that's a few highlights. Of the so what's amazing is you started thinking about this in 2020, in the summer. Yes. By by week in 2020, you launched. Yes. And you've already connected with 10 organizations or at least given out 10 grants yes amazing yeah. and you're still going and next year you have more grants to give out yeah we are set to um, right now we are set to uh, grant a minimum of another twenty thousand dollars wow year. so um, we're we're growing really fast yeah yeah really yeah exponentially really yeah yeah we didn't know what to expect we thought maybe this was going to be you know a few of us pulling together a few hundred bucks, maybe a few thousand bucks, and uh -huh. then before you know it, we're, you know, in the tens of thousands of dollars. That yeah, people are digging in their wallets. Yeah. And they're opening them up. Yeah. This is yeah. good. This yeah. is good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned this before, but some of us have heard about the American Institute of Bisexuality, Fritz Klein's organization, that also gives money to the bi community. How are you different? So the American Institute of Bisexuality, uh, they mainly uh, fund academic research, okay. which is wonderful. We yes. absolutely need more academic research for the bi community. Mm -hmm. We wanted to focus more on community service and really focusing on building bi community on the ground. Mm -hmm. So giving money to nonprofit organizations that are doing work to help increase the visibility and well-being of bi people. So is because something that you would consider funding or helping, mm -hmm. <laughs> or BOP? Yeah, 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 we are a sponsor of Because. So okay, we all right, give, perfect, give, yeah. Give money, but yeah, uh, the Bisexual Organizing Project and Because, these are exactly the type of organizations that we want to be a resource for. So are you located on, you know, Give Out Day or anything like that? Are you p one of these places that people can... We will be next Fun? year. Next yeah. year, yeah. okay. Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, we're all volunteer teams. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's another yeah. thing to yeah. keep in mind. None of the yes. money coming in is paying any of us. Yes. We're actually contributors. So the leadership team, we're giving money to help support this fund, and uh, we're not, uh, we're all volunteers. So, um, this is a labor of love. This is a labor Kinda of like love. Kind of like by cities, we're all, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yep. Yeah. 
What are you the most excited about, Neil? The most, I'll tell you the thing that excites me the most is over the years, and anyone who has been in the space of trying to find more ways to get funding for the bi community, uh, really have fallen on deaf ears in the LGBTQ philanthropic world. Yes. Um, and now that we have a fund, and we have a track record of success that we can point to and say, mm -hmm. this is a really significant need. Um, not only the grants that we've given, but the organization seeking the money. Just our last grant cycle, we gave four grants, but we had over 40 organizations apply really? for funding. Over Collectively, over $200,000 was, was the, the, was the um, request. The request, the okay. So we have this to go into now to other funders that are, other, that are focusing on LGBTQ issues. And we're getting the attention, and we have some meetings lined up with some foundations that may have an interest and say, hey, maybe you were right all these years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that we do yeah, actually, yeah. should actually be supporting the bike community. So I'm, I'm really excited that the success we've had, we can now take and maybe grow even beyond just the, we want to keep growing the giving circle and we want people to keep donating and becoming members and helping support uh, our work, but also for foundations and other philanthropic um, uh, organizations to, to support us. So you said you had two major facets of your mission. Yes. Giving the, Circle is one. The Giving Circle yeah, yeah, is yeah. one. And one thing I should say about the Giving Circle, when you become a member of the Giving Circle, you have a vote on who gets the grant money. Really? So that's one of the key. So if you had 100,000 people who gave, they could, you'd have 100,000 votes? Correct, yeah. <laughs> okay. yep. So everyone who donates uh -huh. uh, monthly. All right. Oh, monthly. monthly, okay. Yeah, okay. so reoccurring, you have to set up. All monthly. right, okay, so it just can't be one time. Can't be one okay, time. All right. To be a member, you give monthly. Okay. It, can be, it starts at $5 a month. Okay. Um, we usually encourage for those that can to do 25. Mm -hmm. But once you join, uh, we send the list of applicants to our membership and you get to do a rank choice voting on who you think should get the, the funds and the winner of that voting is who we give our grant money to. Cool. Yep. So that's one thing we want to keep growing. That's that's the that program mm -hmm. we want to keep growing. And the second part is what I was uh, talking about was really getting the attention of other funders and trying to build partnerships with the LGBTQ philanthropy to also maybe create their own by specific program ah, okay or maybe um, if they want to give us the money and do a regrant ah, program okay. situation okay that's what we're talking about as well if, if they would rather us decide on who gets the money they can just you know grant us uh, money as well so that's something else that we're looking at so those are the two two areas that we're focused on being a catalyst for other foundations and then growing our own fundraising uh, as an organization. So here in the Bay Cities, we've had Philanthropy Fund that's been here a fair amount of time. So that might be an organization that you would consider. We are actually uh, partnering with uh, P-Fund already. Oh, P-Fund, okay. Yeah, they, they actually gave us some money as well. They've given us uh, a $4,000 grant uh, last year okay. um, to help us um, with a fundraising campaign that we're doing. So All right. Yeah, so they're, they're very interested in helping us as well. So we're hoping to keep growing that. Yeah, other, yeah, other yeah, nurture that relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not easy to start what you started in that short amount of time. Do you have a fiscal sponsor or somebody that, you know, kind of helps with a lot of those things? We do. We're very fortunate. Um, we, we, when we originally launched, we didn't have a fiscal sponsor. Okay. We were just, we used a platform called uh, Grapevine, which is just a place for people to put their money in and for us to, to send it out. Um, shortly, just a few months after we launched, we were able to partner with a fiscal sponsor called Social Good Fund. Mm -hmm. So we're a project of Social Good Fund, they're our fiscal sponsor, and they've just been an amazing partner for us. Mm -hmm. They do all of our administrative work, um, all of our bookkeeping, all the money moving in and out, they manage all of that for wow. us. They also give us, uh, we have some perks, we get free web hosting, and we get um, the online uh, fundraising tool that you go through on our website where you put your credit card in, they provide all that to us for free as well. So, Do they take a certain percentage of what they bring in? or 
I mean, yeah, somehow yeah. they got to get paid, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. as a project, we pay them yeah. an administrative fee of 8%. Okay. And then we get all of these services um, that they provide for us. So they help with the IRS and all those good they things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, which is, yeah. Which is the only way we've been able to grow the way we have. There's yeah. no way we would have been able to, as a volunteer team, do all of the work that they've been, they've been providing us. So they are the only one that gets paid to do administrative stuff. None of you who are on the board or the leadership circle. Correct, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put anything in your pockets. Yeah. I, yeah, will yeah. I will say that we, we do pay um, for a grant review council. So the people okay. that are reviewing the applications. Okay. And uh, we, uh, as a commitment to equity, we make sure this grant review council is 100% BIPOC or trans or gender not conforming by people. And we provide a stipend to all of the the people that are on this council to review the application. So they're the only ones that get paid doing any of, any of this. Thing. So do people that aren't BIPOC or transgender also get paid for the review or is it mainly to inclusive? Well, know? the, the, the Grand View Council is 100% either BIPOC or transgender um, or gender nonconforming people. So um, th that's, that's exclusively we wanted to be sure that the those that were most marginalized in the bike community okay. had real power in being able okay. to direct the funds that we're bringing in. So they're the ones that uh, send the slate of applicants to our giving circle for the vote. Okay. So someone like me, and I, I'm just clarifying here, that if, I, if I'm a white cisgender person, bi person, I wouldn't be on the review council. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. All and right. I'm not on the review council. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So you really are reaching out and being very aware and intentional of yes. including, as you say, the most marginalized Yes, it's people. very important to us when we started yeah. this that yeah. we were um, uh, thinking intersectionality mm -hmm. intersectional yeah. mm -hmm. in our yes. work to make sure that um, we were we were focused on anti-racism and racial equity and uh, transgender inclusion. So that was the that was the mechanism that uh, we came up with to make sure that there was real power um, in our organization to make that happen. I have a feeling that might be one of the first attempts at such a inclusion. Yeah. I mean, they really put teeth in it. Yes. I yeah. mean, people always yeah. talk about it, right? Right, yes. But you, you, I mean, I don't know of any other organization that really does that. I know we took it from a model from one of the leadership uh, team members who brought this forward. Oh, model, okay. But I can't remember exactly what organization um, we modeled it after. Okay. Yeah, so others are doing it, but yeah, it's not yeah. very common. Yeah, no, no, this is really cool. Yeah. So we have some time left, I'm guessing five or 10 minutes, less than 10? Six and a half. Six and a half, okay. We have to be mindful of time. What, what are some things that you want to make sure the audience knows about that maybe we haven't covered? And one question that comes to mind, what are the criteria that you have for people getting grants? Because I'm guessing yeah. a whole bunch of people out there are gonna Yes, um, money. this is actually something that uh, we developed after our, f uh, or we continued developing after uh -huh. our first year. We recognized the applications we were getting in. The thing that became very apparent, which we sh probably should have known in the beginning, yeah, yeah. was n a lot of organizations don't know what we mean when we say by specific. Oh, and like okay. Exclusively for the bike community. Yes. There was a lot of we're an LGBTQ organization. There's the letter B. So yeah, yeah, four, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, but there's a lot of money available for undedicated money. So the criteria we put together, we created um, three uh, a sort of a rubric of, of three main components. Uh, this is through community meetings we had with uh, people in the bisexual community: visibility, intention, and impact and participation and power. So we wanted to be sure that whatever project they wanted funded, um, they it was clear that in their naming and description of the project that bi people were centered in the okay. work. Okay. We wanted to be sure that they made clear what their intentions uh, have been and are going to be uh, towards the bi community and um, what impact that they intend to have and if there's a if they intend or what if their impact is different than their intention, uh -huh. what are they doing to rectify that? Okay. So we look at that too, and then of course participation and power. Um, 
are by people showing up in the work that they're doing. Is, okay. Are they, um, and is there by people in leadership and decision making roles in their organization? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be very clear that when we say this, these grants are for the bike community, that um, we put forward some guidelines on exactly what we mean when we say that. So that's what we had come up with um, to make sure that when the grants come in or the applications come in, that this is sort of the guideline we're following to make sure that it is by specific, it is for the bike community. So I tell people in my other work that I do that I'm licensed to ask dumb questions, so here comes one. How do you know that somebody's not going to take your money and run to Fiji with it? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Go um, on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say a couple things I will say. The majority of our grants have been to buy organizations. Okay. And so there is definitely some trust there, yeah, yeah. for sure. But we do we do ask for reporting. Okay, uh, all right. We do ask them to send us a brief um, report of after the, they completed their project that we funded, uh -huh. you know, how it went and some information that we can share. So um, if they if they did run, out, <laughs> run away with some money, well, they wouldn't get any money again from us. Oh, there you go. That. That's it. That <laughs> yeah, that's one and it. done yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so any other things that we haven't covered that you want to make sure we do, like how to contact your organization, when they, people should be thinking of applying, but whatever yeah. else. Uh, well, visibilityimpactfund.org is our website. Um, you can uh, go there. You, there's a link to um, join the Giving Circle. That would be the okay. first thing. And that's a very wonderful club, I understand. It is a special, very fabulous people. It is we're yes. very wonderful yes, people. Yes, yes, we yes. We'd love to have yes. anybody join. Uh -huh. um, you get to be part of changing the philanthropic landscape for bi uh, communities. Um, you get to help direct our collective funds to wonderful bi orgs and projects. Uh -huh. You can join, uh, five, like I said, $5 a month or uh, whatever uh, makes sense uh, for you. and. Uh, there's also a sign up if you just want to stay updated on all of our work. Mm -hmm. uh, follow us on our Twitter and Facebook and we also have an email list. You can sign up on our website, there's a sign up form there. And then you can kind of see all of the um, projects that we're funding, ways to get involved um, and stay updated on our, our progress. You guys are amazing. I mean literally. Because so goodness. how often in the past have we had to go with hat in hand, right? You know, keep getting the door slammed in our face, right? Yeah. And now it's like no more. Yeah. No more. Yeah, that's we what are we're here. Hoping. We're hoping that this is going to be uh, be the long overdue by philanthropic movement. That's what we're hoping to yeah to, to start. And this is your second year in existence. Second year, yeah. Second anniversary. Yeah. So in ten years and twenty years, you'll still be here. Yes. And maybe we will too. And you can give us an update on Vice Cities. I would love to. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Neil, thank you so much for coming forth and being a part of Vice Cities today and for the work that you're doing. Because it's not easy. It's not easy in a community Isn't. that has too many disparities in it. Right. Yeah. And so that, that's ultimately what we're wanting to yeah. make a difference in. Yeah. Yeah. We are coming down the home stretch. And so would you please join me with our signature goodbye? which is bye for bye now. For now.